That's how I think. I, 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 you know, I still don't have something so much about the house. So he is walking around. It's like, oh, I truly need to find a second. Oh, Becky's here. Could you just see? Well, yeah. Thank you. I think you might have to be a nice picture on that one today. Okay. I don't know. It's I I I I just very must be something. It's an accounting thing, I know, but you know, but it's cool. It's not so hard to make it Um, but I, first of all, local color is our annual 
exhibition that always kicks off our gallery season for the year. And um, it is informed by our theme for the year. Every year, the Arts Council selects a, a different theme, and we invite our artists to submit artwork that interprets that theme. And so it's during we give uh, several awards, and uh, one of those um, awards is the best of show. It is determined by the piece that best represents the theme and also artistic excellence. So those decisions were just made, um, and uh, we had the press there this morning to interview the artists and all of that good stuff. And upstairs, we usually have our rising star scholar, but this year we had Woody Wonders, and the subtitle for Woody Wonders is From Sheep to Shark. We have done an incredible amount of programs since I've been at the Arts Council that I deem quite meaningful. But I am going out on the limb and saying that I think this is perhaps the most mm -hmm. meaningful program we have done since I've been there. We received an, a grant from the Wyoming Foundation, and uh, about nine women were able to participate in this nine month project. And uh, they were taken to our, our sheep farms in Wyoming County. They saw the dirty, dirty uh, sheep. They learned how to get the wool from those dirty sheep, wash them, part them, learn to spin them, and turn them into beautiful garments or accessories. That show ends this Friday as well. And if you've not had a chance to stop by the gallery and see it, I highly recommend it because, again, we as an arts organization in a very rural and agricultural based community are totally committed to making those connections every time that we have an opportunity. And again, this exhibition does that very well. Celebrating our agricultural um, uh, heritage in this community and making those connections with our art, um, or our, 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 our fiber artists, and they have done a fantastic job again. This is perhaps our fourth most significant art and agri um, project, and we are super proud of this exhibition. So I invite you to please check it out. It's only two days, but you will be pleased and you will be proud to be a Wyoming County resident seeing chic stuff turn into clothing or accessory. It's amazing. So you have both of these exhibitions on card and in your newsletter. There is no way you can forget to check them out. Part of the press is our spring newsletter, and there's an amazing event happening this spring. Right on the front page, we are giving one of the most significant world-renowned dance company to Wyoming County. Teeny tiny Wyoming County is bringing Garth Fagan dance to our area. This again was a grant that we received two grants actually to make this possible. One from Dark Dance Force New York, the other from Tompkins Bank of Casta. And I just want to give a huge shout out to Tompkins Bank of Casta. Since we started this program of bringing a professional dance company to Wyoming County, um, I think it's about 12 years ago. Um, Tompkins Bank of Castile has, has, has come alongside us and have been one of our um, co-sponsors. Some years it's been Tompkins Bank of Castile and the Wyoming Foundation. They have actually been a significant supporter of this program as well. But this year, or that I think last year, we got the grant from them to do Woody Wonders, so we were able to select to, to leverage some funding from Dance Force New York to make this happen. Um, this should have happened in 2020, and of course, we know why it was 
postponed. Um, and last year we thought it was going to happen, but the schools were still not allowing foreign bodies into their spaces. So it's going to happen this year on May 14th, and we are beyond delighted to be presenting this with Dance Force New York and the Tompkins Back Castile at the Letchworth Central School. Um, we hope that you will all come out and um, show your support for bringing professional dance to Wyoming County and um, support uh, the work that that we are doing by bringing this experience to our community. Um, a couple of the things I want to highlight that brings me immense joy every year are our two all county all county art shows, um, K through eighth grade, and Becky, we are in the process of getting all those certificates ready for you to sign. Sorry, it's a lot of sign in this year in particular because we had a couple extra schools that have just um, joined Delvin's Middle School, um, and Pioneer now has three different sets of middle um, uh, K through eighth grade school. So there's a little bit more, but if you've not had a chance to visit the YMCA walking track, this is where all of this beautiful virgin art is being displayed right now. And it's, it's incredible. So please, please take the time to go see this exhibition. And um, it's actually one of our largest events. We have a reception for these kiddos um, when we close the show. And um, standing room only, we always have over, over 200 people that attend this event because it's the kids, their parents, their grandparents, sometimes aunts and uncles and cousins. So, and, and usually it's about 25% of all the kids that show up, but we have so many family members that are attending. They all receive a, a certificate of um, participation and um, one student receives a director's choice. It's the, it's the piece of art that speaks most to my soul and they get a nice big art kit with all kinds of fun stuff in it. So please take the time to go visit our largest <coughs> gallery in Wyoming County at the YMCA. And speaking about satellite gallery, and, um, Scott was just uh, saying to Sharon, there's art everywhere. So if you are not aware, our satellite galleries are aligned very much with our mission to bring art to the people and people to the artists. So we are showcasing the talents of our local artists. And um, right here in Wyoming, in Warsaw, we have a small art satellite gallery at the physical therapy building next door to the, 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 the um, hospital, the office for the aging, Warsaw Library, and the YMCA. In fact, YMCA is our most visible. Um, and of course, the, the chamber, how can I forget that one? Um, yes, and uh, the YMCA walking track is our most visible um, satellite gallery, and we actually sold the most work from there. So this year we sold um, a little over a thousand dollars of art from that walking walk track for local artists. So yes, Scott, art is everywhere and it's super, super close for you to just go and consume it. So don't miss it. And then our high school art show opens at our gallery next week, Friday night. Again, it's a show that you really don't want to miss because we are seeing artists in the making we, we host this one at our gallery because at this stage we are helping to um, help these kids, groom these kids into professional artists. And um, Dan Jens can speak, her daughter has been in several of these shows, correct? And so it really, there's a sense of pride and um, that these kids get from seeing their work presented in a professional capacity. So again, please come, ce come celebrate our young artists support um, what our teachers are doing. It's a collaborative project that the Arts Council and all of our county schools have had for over 30 years. We've been presenting these art shows. So we really encourage you 
to come out and support this. This is these are two events that are directly supported by our funding that we receive through our board of supervisors. So we, we would love to see you come and, uh, and see these see these exhibitions. And then I just uh, want to go with a, a, a bit of a sad news. Um, many of you may have known Kyla Damzak. He has been a dedicated volunteer of the Arts Council for um, over 30 years. He um, volunteered as a, um, an intern for our film program. And then almost 30 years, he has been the curator of our classic film series program. And he passed away unexpectedly a few weeks ago. And I'm um, not gonna cry. Uh, it's still raw, it's still very sad. Um, it's a huge loss to the Arts Council, to our film program, and um, the community. He was so invested in this program and uh, the community, and um, he'll be deeply, deeply missed. So I just wanted to highlight some of these events that are happening. I hope you will find the time to, to look through the, our newsletters and be informed as to how we're making art happen in this community and um, hope you are pleased that with uh, the funds that you are investing in the Arts Council and um, do believe that we are being good stewards of the funds that you've been, you've been trusted to us. So thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> All right, let's keep making art happen in Wyoming County. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, I think uh, you're a parent. You probably still have some fifth grade pottery in your, in your book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, at home uh, from the children that were making uh, art as they grew up from school. Indeed. So. Um, and I'm glad you said that because when we were installing the art show at the Y, it took us about nine hours. It's a it's an intense show because there's so much art, there's so much art. But a parent came up to us and said, I'm gonna show you something while my son, who is in his 20s now, lives in New York City, is doing. And this is a side gig because he I think he's a physical therapist or something like that. And she showed us all this pottery this kid was making, and she said, I want to thank you guys because you have given confidence to so many kids by displaying their work in spaces like this. And this is what, and this is the result. And it just, we were just choked up because that is really what it's all about. So um, indeed, the, 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 the art continues in our basements and wherever else that um, sure. happens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's see, I think the next few items are for the um, Chamber of Commerce with Sky and Eric. Um, let me do the first two here. Uh, so the first one is a uh, Service contract uh, authorizing the chairwoman to sign a uh, contract with the Wyoming County Chamber of Commerce and Tourism um, to provide American Rescue Plan Act funding for the website redesign in an amount not to exceed forty-five thousand dollars, effective January of this year through December twenty-first of this year. Um, we can do the next one to it. That is another professional services contract authorizing children to sign a contract again with the Wyoming County Chamber of Commerce uh, and Tourism to provide American Rescue Plan Act funding for Fresh Air Adventures, regional marketing and public relations campaign in the amount not to exceed $20,000 effective January of this year through December 31st. Um, and maybe we should also talk about, and I can get it to you at the end of the day, if you want to file us to do the actual book. I thought about that. Okay. I, want to do, want to do that. I would love, I think we should put it with, with the two contracts. Okay. 
So this would be both the application and the appropriation. Two contracts and the appropriation. So one, two, and then there will be a third box. Got it. Okay. And then uh, th these all go back to when we met on October 12th. Right. And reviewed um, the request. So this is one of the two of the items that was approved. Okay. So uh, the third item then would be the appropriation in the amount of the total sixty five thousand sixty five thousand dollars um providing the appropriation for the American rescue plan rescue plan act funding for the website and the fresh air adventure state marketing campaign. So we care to make a motion. I'll speak up at once here. <laughs> <laughs> I have it from uh, Supervisor Davis. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. All right, so I have a motion from Supervisor Davis to approve the contracts as well as the appropriation. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Here. Okay. Now, <laughs> We want to continue some discussion relative to the ag center receptions position. Do you want to speak to that? I have your email. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know if the rest of the board is over. No, I only sent it. You sent it to yeah. Becky and myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I sent it just so you have some more details about what come up. So, okay. I there were three separate sorry. scenarios that you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had done I, I, I wrote up one scenario that was approximately 30 hours. And that was getting us closer to the 23,000 range. Um again, these are all based off of 13, 20 an hour. So that's what we've talked about here. I think Supervisor Kazelski made a good point that we may not be able to get somebody for 13, 20 an hour, but I I took the most conservative number and we could go up from there if we want. But um and then so that was 30 hours for a single individual then put uh a notation because if we go over 35 that uh health insurance would have to be in the equation so that raises it up closer to 27 28 000. second scenario which may actually be better for a two-person for around 38 hours a week scenario that uh because that will help. You can almost have set hours, move them around, fill in if you have one missing or not, um, for around 27, five. Um, and the other scenario was just changing hours, so then you could do two scenarios. Um, but they both come in about a little over 27,000. That's at a base wage of 1320, because I went and calculated also what the, um, all the additional, Taxes that you would have to pay. So it's sort of the whole thing. So we didn't have any of that. So essentially, scenario two, which is the two person for 38 hours, um, with coverage from 8 30 in the morning until 4 30 p.m., split between two people. So you might have a person work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, half, Wednesday half day, and they would get 19 hours. The other person would work Wednesday, the remainder of that day, Thursday, and Friday, same amount of hours. But I like that one in particular because in case someone's sick, yeah, you can, or you know, you need to pull a person in, you've got two people to work with, and a lot of people wouldn't mind a hard time. Yeah, and you, you like could do, it, the other scenario was. You can do a week that one person works Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and next week they do Tuesday, Thursday, sure. and rotate. And there's multiple scenarios on that. It, it's a little bit more money, $27,471.87 at the $13.20 hour rate. However, um, we're not paying any benefits. Right. Uh, now, is it contracting? Chamber. Manage the employee. Yes. Yeah. And then I also put in just uh, a sample job description too, which is basically because we had 
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Scott actually has two pages of job description and job duties. And that was a bit, I did ask, so I put that up to the folks in the building. That was the only one that responded actually <laughs> um, with, with some sample job descriptions just to see if there was anything I seemed to be missing. I, I think I caught it all right. Yeah, you're listening to a pretty good job. I think you talked about this as well. I mean, they're not just going to be sitting there, they're going to be busy. Yeah. You know, when I read through, you know, not only the greeting portion of the position, but then all of the initial work. Yeah, I mean, there's enough duties between booking rooms, sorting mail, delivery mail, um, showing people where to go. I mean, I know it, it takes time for those of us in the building that are doing it. Right. You know, so. And it provides the additional security for the facility that we I are really looking for, right? So, um, what's next? The next step is if you like some of that, you need to put a contract to Okay. And I'm not sure if that's where I, I put, you know, these are fairly tight numbers to the 13. Money, I assume. I mean, I think it sounds to me as I wrote it and look at what the job duties are, it would be an ideal position for, you know, maybe a retired person or a student or somebody younger. You know, I mean, it, probably somebody that's obviously looking to you know, have a career. This is not, sure. this is not the job for them, but it is a nice supplemental fill in type position. So, yeah, I mean, you can retire and that probably going to make. So much money that it's not going to affect your social security. So, right. um, you see, this is a, a, an opportunity for someone that perhaps if we're somewhere to win. I think it is. I mean, and that's the thing is typically also people that are working these types of hours are not going to be long term, you know, sure. not many years. So, there'll be probably some movement for that. So let me ask this question to the committee. I mean, are, are we in agreement that we need a person to sit in that desk coming into the exit? I think so. After going over there and watching people wander, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wide open. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it doesn't leave a good impression that people are coming if they're. It's their first time here, and it's the face that they're going to see. It's the first thing they're going to see. The other thing is with the changing space uh, considerations for that building, we're going to be having people come in there that are new, relatively new, perhaps veterans who don't know where to go, or you know, there's a class or something. You know, um, it's best to have a person sitting there who can direct traffic. In that regard, do, do we think garbage? Uh, uh, <laughs> what do I call it? It's a garbage um, issue. Um, I've walked, I walked several people up to the planning department <laughs> myself, which is where I also discovered you could see the sizes of the garbage can. <laughs> but it's, it's that type of thing, that, you know. I mean, for somebody to be able to get up and walk a person around, especially. If, Better services are coming in. You know, you're going to need some more direction. And you also, the person, we're going to have to have maps of the village of Warsaw, of course, because there's a lot of directing. People think that we're the town office, they think that we're the clerk's office, they think that we're the treasurer's office. It's, it's it, oddly enough, there's a lot of confusion about what goes on there. So it's a lot of giving people helpful information about where to go next. You know, so. As far as having people, you know, part time like that, um, at our library in Mass and Manchester, it's the same people that they work very few hours, right. you know, to cover the shifts. And so I'm optimistic that sure. well, there's people out there, well, yeah, even like, in this mock market. Yeah. yeah. And do you think that this wage rate is in the most and that's up to you. I mean, if, if, I guess we'll find out what happens when we, you know, advertise it. Um, okay. Like I said, I've got a floor minimum there, so. Yeah, 
you know, the worst that would happen if you even approved the contract say next month to do this and find that um, what you're proposing is not getting any candidates. Okay. So would someone care to make a resolution that we ask the county or I have some good templates and we can put something together, Scott and I yeah, okay. Okay. If, if it's Cheryl and Scott and you put your heads together to come up with a contract. That we can uh, then exercise with the chamber for um, reception services at the uh, front desk of the ad center. And you'll next month, right? Um, so it would be nice to have it done sooner. Can that be doable? Yeah, that's what you wanted. I would just suggest that maybe we put the, the dollar value, uh, maybe not to exceed what twenty eight thousand. Okay. Twenty eight thousand. I give you six hundred bucks to kind of work with it. Right. Six hundred dollars. I got it. Let's get that price. Forty seven four seventy one eighty seven. I was very precise with those numbers, basically. And then much. So yes, is that with any funds available? It would be. Okay. All right. Do we want to do if we're gonna do the contract, we should do the appropriation. Yes. Okay, so we will do the contract and the appropriation then in one fell swoop. If someone is willing to make that motion. I will make the <laughs> Did somebody do it? <laughs> I'll make the motion. Thank you. Uh, especially given that we will be closing the schedule to close on the 28th. Perfect. Okay, we'd like to have that place populated by, you know, a live body. All right. So I have a motion by uh, uh, the chairwoman. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, is that it? Yes, it is. Hey, Scott. This one. Here you go, Cheryl. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next item is to uh, make an appointment. Appoint, um, uh, let's see, Jim here. Appoint Mr. Rakowski. <clears throat> oh, Mr. James Rakowski um, to the position of uh, board, uh, board of directors for a three year term. Effective February 7th, 2022 through February 6th, 2025. You want to say anything, uh, Jim? Um, no, I really don't have anything to add other than I did touch base with uh, Jim. Um, he had been a little challenged uh, trying to get to uh, meetings this past year with the pandemic and all the vaccinations and things. But now that things are calming down, he feels much more confident he can uh, get engaged uh, much more with the IDA board. So uh, he enthusiastically would like to renew his term. Great. So, so he's already on the board, right? Currently he's on the board. He was fulfilling a, <clears throat> a term that Sandy Purdy had left when she resigned. Um, so he's actually uh, filling in for himself for the next three years. Okay. All right. Someone care to move that? Okay, I have a motion by Supervisor Granger. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, do you have anything else, Jim, that you wanted to cover? Uh, no, that's it for today. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is the countywide zoning, um, Mr. Roberts. Want to go ahead and go through monthly report? And I have your minutes statement here, but I don't have your monthly report. Okay, I'll go over to So for January, we uh, came in with 11 permits issued. Came in with a uh, 426,000 estimated value of construction. We have $1,279 in zoning permit collections. 150 in land separation permits. $75 in variances. And a total of $1,704 for the month of January, which is about $800 in that last year. For the quarterly payments will go out. Um, so we're off to a pretty good start. We've got a bunch of commercial projects that are coming in, site plan reviews and stuff right now. Um, so those are taken off now, so that those are ready to go in the spring. A um, couple of those, select door, uh, Lunch Group Campground, over in Pike, um, a few other projects like that are potentially coming in too. So the commercial activities are pretty good out there. Okay. The minute statement, uh, page four is really uh, probably what you're looking at when you're looking at where we're at as far as uh, expenses to date. Uh, why the minute statement wouldn't print out like I normally do. Uh, let me that, see it. So it's not popular to get it. Yes. Because we have a lesson on how to run stuff. I don't know if she is. Yeah, she was just trying to bring it down in the public account. She was trying something new. Yeah. I can uh, I can tell you what I mean, but it doesn't work like that. It's not as easy as it is. So, the uh, bottom line here on the P4 was your year to date expenditures. Yeah, according to you, it was $9,213.67, correct? Yeah. It's an available budget of $159.79.64. Yep. Uh, and that's under one ledger line, your general fund line. That, that's it. That's, it's, Is that a total? Yeah, so. Because it shows a different amount. Um, <laughs> there's a, I have to call her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easy to read. It is. She just doesn't need to run it with the detail and it would be easier. Sure. And then, um, so what that report does as opposed to what you had before, I think is it breaks it out by salary, regular total gold pieces. Um, but I'm, I've still had an, an argument with the software company because they had any balance, although it's right right now because you just ran January. If you ran just February, it doesn't give you the right ending balance. Right. Okay, which is making no one wise. Yeah, it's insane that they didn't even have it worked. The right numbers are coming in. Sure. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> she can continue to run the old. It's a learning experience, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I guess the job is pretty short. Unless anybody's got any questions. Well, you had sent out an email about the, the roof construction. Uh, yes, I did. So I'll bring you up to date on what was happening at the X Center. They finally started to do work there. <laughs> when did they actually start yesterday? They, well, they, they, they're doing their staging. They, so as of yesterday, they started the staging, they put up the barriers around the top of the roof. So if you see flags and stuff blowing around up there, that's, you know, they're just trying to get their barrier stuff set up. They are supposed to be back on site tomorrow um, to actually start some real work on the roof. There's no materials that have been delivered rooftop yet. They're still all back in the rear of the, the parking lot along the creek line, along with the dumpster that showed up. So that when we start tearing our home, we have a place to put it. So that's on site now. They're going to be on site tomorrow. We'll see how much they get done. I know there's another change of weather coming, so we'll see how that goes. And they're going to do, like I said, the drain. Yeah, they're going to replace the two. Yeah, two internal roof drains along the porch of the ag center that's parallel to Center Street. We have no roof drains over the rear wing over the top of like our, our wing upstairs above building codes, but uh, 
uh, along Center Street, there's two root drains that come down internally into the building. Um, those are both going to be replaced while they're doing the work up top. So we have to gain them access tomorrow. So I got one of their guys to measure materials for inside. One of them is in the USDA office. So I'll have to get them there to check that out. The other one is in the uh, more of portion of the hallway, which is uh, Mike's walking in now. So I got this guy to bring the ladder so those guys can go through and <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna try and stay ahead of the curve there so we can keep these guys working so that none of us are holding that up off track for the amount of time we've been waiting for them to get home. So most of the snow is melted off of the roof, so they really don't have a lot of juggling to do uh, as of right now. <laughs> Hopefully we don't get any more big snows and they can keep them along. So okay, we'll see. Is this a specific group of contractor that's doing it? It's a real moving contract. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <They're real. laughs> I got to come along. I got to come along the other day. Uh, they seem good to work with. Oh, here you go. So they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, they don't agree with the way the people have this is something like the first one to the size, which is good enough. No, it's not, it's not true. He did, yeah, but his numbers were higher because they worked for us and uh, just for the product, just a little bit better, right? Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving along again. Um, we have Mr. Perkins here, I believe. Um, what a resource can you see? Record user. Because people that are looking confused because it's not on the version, but Dan and I have it. Okay. <laughs> so, this is a contract $3,000 and under with TI sales on Hudson Road, Sunbury, Mass. for the lease of water meter reading equipment. Not to receive $1,500 effective January 1st of this year through January 30th of this year. <laughs> As I mentioned at our last board um, meeting, you're awarded to be the replacement grant only. There's going to be a period of time until that money starts showing up, all the contracts are signed. And that's probably going to be shown by the time that happens. We actually have one more signature to collect. And as soon as we submit that, Appendix uh, C to the Department of State, they're ready to send us our money. Okay, so we just need to put them. Yeah. Well, this, this, what this is going to do is basically cover January, February, and March, and April. It's basically building in a period of time because I still have to read meters for a few communities. Once we have the funding in place from the meter replacement grant, we're going to be purchasing. So, what this is doing is just covering that period of time until we actually have the money. Purchase. So you're going to lease it for the time being. Yeah. So it's, it's equipment we have right now. When we get the grant, we're actually buying new equipment. Um, and then there'll be a, a refund of some of that. Uh, so this is just covering those months um, up till we have funding in place. Okay. And he's talking about a much bigger amount of money. Than okay. Yeah. That's, yes. This is like 270 something. I think. Yeah. yeah. The total, the total uh, program was 270,000. The grant was 243,000. It's a 10% on average. Any questions? You're going to have these leaders in place by the end of June? No. What we will be doing by the end of June, though, is purchasing what we need to read the meters. Uh, the meters we have until May of next year to actually get all the meters in place. But I'll start purchasing some of the equipment that we early on. So what this rental list piece of equipment we currently have to read meters. Um, so that'll be replaced once we have the grant money. 
think you'll be done by June. The meeting needs. What will be done by June? The re needing the lease for the meters, what, the water meter reading. Yeah, I just yeah. created that lease basically. We've had this for the last few years, this lease. And so what I did was just extend this lease out for six months, allowing us to get that grant in place, all the signatures in place, get the paperwork done, where we can actually start pulling the funds off of that. I anticipate by the end of June, we'll be able to pull the funds off to, to purchase the equipment. The actual meters will probably be later than that, obviously, but we had about a year to put those in. Once, the, once we got all the paperwork signed up and going out to the communities, meeting with each one, and we setting out that time schedule as to what that would look like on the meters, we'll be placing in each individual community. And would you uh, purchase similar equipment? This is the, what we're purchasing is going to be better than what we're leasing, right? Okay. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be adequate enough. It's going to be fairly. I mean, it's going to be brand new equipment. What I'm leasing right now is five years old. Ah, oh, so. so this again is just buying that time until we actually have the funding in place for the meter replacement program. And what you're what you're talking about here is just one component. It's just the, the equipment that's needed to read the meters, not the actual meters and something. So it's a computer and software and the antenna that goes on the truck. Very good. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it. Let's see if anybody else has any other questions for me. Well, I will just mention we still have that opportunity, that project opportunity listing out there. <clears throat> uh, I did make it with Jim Pierce yesterday getting some feedback from IDA. If there are any projects that you think of that should be added, or maybe some of the projects on that list they should be moved up, uh, please let me know because we are going to finalize that on our next water resource agency meeting. So I'll take a look at that if you have not. If you need a copy, let me know. I feel like it. Sure, I'll probably have it. It was, on the, it was attached to the minutes on the last uh, water resource agency meeting. Mm -hmm. It was an attachment to the minutes. So. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Mr. Bragg. <laughs> you break the problem. Anybody guess? Yes, I did. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, uh, Supervisors. Uh, when we met in January, I discussed that we were going to begin the transition to a current base. Uh, garbage collection. Part of the strategy for our bid and subsequent contract with waste management was that we'd send out postcards that would give the option of a 96 gallon versus 64 gallon total. That option was designed specifically for single people, particularly seniors, um, that don't produce much garbage. Uh, at that time, there was an estimate that like a couple hundred that might request a 64 gallon tub. Well, two things happened. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the postcard went out in January and it had a deadline of February the 14th. That postcard, for reasons we do not know of, got stuck in the mail. We had part of a subsequent stretch is soft to, to keep communication with the town and village clerks to let them know to, to you know, Get the information out, put it on social media, applicable. That happened, they happened very well. Unfortunately, social media, the information on social media, in the absence of the postcard, created a panic. Consequently, we've had a just a volcanic number of calls and emails. Our office has been totally consumed. Um, the, the, interest and desire for the smaller uh, 64 gallon tow has well exceeded expectations. We've averaged probably in the past three weeks about 3,000 calls, uh, about 2,500 emails, and right now about 1,000 requests for the 64 gallon tows. So people are calling us. It's not just to say, hey, I need this, this tow. It's an absolute confusion. What is going on? 
What can I put in it? Can I still use a bag? Um, am I even in this system? Is it going to be cost? So I have to give exception give credit to the women of uh, on codes. They provide an extraordinary service to the residents of Wyoming County, particularly the civil rights state. But what they have done, um, they've been kind, considerate, and helpful uh, in, in an environment that would have otherwise broken a team. It's made us stronger, and, and we've gotten very, we've gotten better with each and every day. So I, I really have to be thankful for the dedicated, dedicated team at Coles. They went above and beyond. People have been working after hours, people have been coming in on weekends, people came in on the holiday to get this done, to, be, to make sure that every resident is given a clear and concise answer to their questions and they are given the opportunity to get the total payment. As we're evolving in the learning from that experience of the, the final distribution of the totes, we're working really hard with Pat Martino Waste Management. And Pat has been a valued partner too. The level of service that Pat has provided to our residents is extraordinary. Um, I'll give you an example in Bennington. Some a route was not picked up. Um, the garbage had been there a couple of days. Pat went in his own personal vehicle after dropping off his kids from school, picked up the garbage and took it to his home. So, I mean, Pat is, whenever we have a problem or an issue, waste management has been a good part of it. And going forward, we're really, we really uh, are coming up with a strategy to make sure, learning our, uh, our, our, the lessons from the delayed postcard, so the eventual rollout of these totes is as seamless or painless as possible. We do understand there's a lot of issues that might be, for instance, along the lake, on private roads. Patrick and I are working to come up with a resolution. Uh, there's issues with agricultural, uh, from the farmers with recycling, we're trying to come up with answers for them. Um, also, just getting people acclimated in hilly terrain or windy conditions, we're willing to work with people to make sure, again, uh, change is always a little bit painful, and we want to make this is, is to be as dedicated as possible to our residents. So I'd ask Mr. Martino to come and give us an update as to how we're going forward to, to uh, ensure that you have our confidence that this will be done properly, that residents get what they need and want, and so that we have clear and concise answers so there's no further confusion. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, as Jim mentioned, Pat Martino with Waste Management Public Sector Solutions Rep uh, covering New York State. Just like the first speaker talked about the arts, I'm here to talk about fun things. Um, I think it's fun. Um, but uh, no, we're, we're on the, the early pieces, really starting to gear up for this card distribution, uh, which is a enormous undertaking uh, when you're talking about approximately 23,000 uh, carts that are going to be distributed uh, over the coming weeks. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit of a, uh, the plan going forward. Um, as Jim mentioned, there was one wrinkle here that you typically don't see in most community rollouts, and it is that option for the smaller cart, but I knew that was important to uh, a number of supervisors. Uh, going back to contract time. So that's why I was included. And that I think um, kind of created a, a little bit of a situation that, that needed to be resolved. Um, I think we have a good plan going forward um, and we'll be turning the corner on that. There are going to be times as anytime you have change that you're going to see spikes in, in calls and that sort of thing. But I think by and large, the, the bulk of that has kind of been forced through already. Um, from a current distribution standpoint, so the cars are being produced currently. Uh, they will start being distributed on the first week of April. Um, I believe that's April 4th, that Monday, or 4th. Uh, and it will continue for three to four weeks. It's going to take three to four weeks with multiple crews out there uh, distributing the carts. What Jim and I have uh, discussed a lot along the way is being able to give everybody real-time updates on the, the progression. Uh, so you're going to know ahead of time the order of uh, card distribution. 
where we're starting, where we're ending. Um, we, we have a pretty well thought out plan with that, starting with uh, early distribution, some of the uh, what we call easier areas, and then at the tail end of the distribution, some of the more seasonal areas. As uh, as you get closer to May, you'll have more seasonal people, you know, making their way back to their residence there. So uh, a lot of thoughts gone into that piece. One thing uh, we'll be reaching out of, uh, in in short order is uh, in, in the order is going to be based on what I just talked about. But within that, we're going to keep clusters together of service days. So we're, we're going to prioritize service days Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, shuffle those around based for the distribution based on what I was just talking about. Within those areas, um, we're going to be reaching out looking for sites for a handful of days uh, for the toads to be uh, delivered, kind of staging area, and then distributed out from there. Um, so I just want to give everybody a, 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 an advanced heads up on, on that piece. Now, ahead of any distribution is getting more information out to the residents. Um, we are looking to have draft uh, materials finalized by the end of this week and off to print. So we hit a, a window of middle of March for every resident to have the information needed for the, the new program, which is obviously well ahead of anyone even receiving a tote come April. Um, the information is pretty thorough. Um, uh, what to expect with the cards, how to use them, how to place them, um, how the, uh, the bulk component comes into play with it going to monthly bulk, the recycling, going to every other week recycling, giving them calendars, uh, letting them know because there is going to be some rerouting, so there will be some new service days. They're going to receive a full listing of new service days. Um, so all this will be going out, and I have uh, uh, samples of, of the drafts that I can provide you. Um, this is not, I, I have your draft, but ultimately this is going to be kind of how the brochure looks. This is a uh, Lancaster brochure, uh, which goes to them every year. And by the way, every uh, Wyoming County resident in the program will also start receiving a brochure every year, just as a refresh every year, give them the new calendar every year, and, and so on and so forth. So if you can see, it's uh, fairly extensive, um, you know, with, with a lot of information. Again, I'll, I'll leave uh, material so if anyone wants to get their hands on it ahead of time, you can also email it to you uh, so you can see it if you're interested. I'll, I'll trust uh, if, if any of those requests have gone well through Jim, you can uh, let me know and I'll, I'll send them out. Um, aside from that, um, some other pieces. Uh, the other good thing with this information going out is it's also going to start steering people towards using our resources with our call centers. Um, which will take uh, some of the workload off of the county. With the first piece, the postcard going out for the carts, it was important to keep all those requests coming through one central area, which is why it was steered through uh, Jim and, and his team. Uh, but going forward um, in all the promotional materials, uh, there'll be uh, additional waste management resources with, with phones. Um, we're also going to be launching a uh, Wyoming County trash specific website as part of our website. Um, so again, one more area to go to. So they'll, they'll have essentially two websites. Uh, Jim's been getting a lot of information up on the planning department website and they'll have the waste management website. Um, it's also going to be a good opportunity. Hope, hopefully, knock on wood, we won't have to worry about it anymore this year, but uh, uh, that website, the WM website is also good to link on maybe town pages or village pages um, because they can also receive uh, service alerts through there. So if, uh, if a snowstorm comes through with the are we going to be delayed? Um, that's a good place they can go to to, to find out very quickly. Um, so just a, you know, a constant flow of, of communication going out. And uh, again, there, there will be uh, additional spikes when 
when this mailer hits, there's going to be more phone calls coming in to us, coming into the county. Uh, then you're going to hit another wall, and then you're going to have the, the carts out on the uh, on the streets. And then um, May second, so as residents receive their carts, they're welcome to use them right away. But the new um, guidelines for the bulk and the recycling, so the monthly bulk and the every other week recycling. That doesn't go into effect until everybody's carts have been distributed. Uh, so we are setting a go live date um, of May 2nd with all of those uh, specific guidelines. So that, uh, that, that it's a pretty conservative date, gives us a little wiggle room in case there's any hiccups in the distribution because uh, we want that to be a, a very seamless process. So with that said, happy to answer any questions you may have. I, I have one that's, that's probably known in here, but um, I took a garbage truck across the, the street and I put the snow and everything. I actually shoveled a spot to put the garbage in because we had such tremendous snow. The arms, how far away does it have to be from the curb, like in the village? So I, I would say uh, within four to six feet of the curb, closer to the curb, the better. They, they do have some reach with that. Uh, it articulates pretty well, um, even up and down. I, uh, we don't want people putting it up on top of the snow bank, yeah. but if it's on you know, a few inches of, of snow, that's, that's not going to uh, hurt anything. Um, Same guidance of where you put your cans. Yeah, but when this whole bill is there's a county ambulance, because we don't pay taxes, so we're not on it. But yeah, we have people there 24 7. People mm -hmm. they drive garbage and we put it out and they pick it up. So how will we fit into this? They've been receiving free service this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> got sent out. I have not received them and people of the people that I've talked to in the village of Silver Springs has not received them. Is this a common? Is this something that you have heard? Uh, I, I, I've heard of a couple of small areas and um, I wish I had an answer for that other than uh, we have verified the mailing database that was used in uh, all, all parcels eligible were on that database where they went uh, once they were dropped off at the post office. I can't speak to that. And my next question, I have another one. If somebody elects that they want a 65 or the larger one and they decide that that is not the one they needed, can they switch out? They can. However, there is a fee uh, for swap. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons I, I think the, the guidance Jim and his team were giving out as people were calling in is making sure that's really what they wanted, right? Because um, it is a, a one-time option. Uh, you can imagine there's a fair amount of cost when you're, you know, dealing with swapping them out, right? Um, so there's a, I believe it's a $75 swap fee, a one-time fee. The reason why I ask is I've, I've had that question to me as if a later date that they decide they need to swap up. Yeah, and, and, and I, you know, my, my personal thought is unless there's a physical restriction, uh, 
96 gallon car is, is the way that you're, you've been off having more capacity than less, right? Um, because the, the trash is going to have to go in there. So, uh, to your constituents, I would uh, recommend them going with the 96 unless there's a very specific reason not to. I have a couple. Yes, sir. So I'm familiar with your rollout in Lancaster because uh, I in Boston there. And I went, went through this whole process with them. And they're fairly elderly. In, uh, in Lancaster, the original rollout was you got a larger trope automatically. Yep. You got a 96 gallon. So, of course, my 95 pound mother in law, you know, couldn't manage that tow. But you had to wait six months before you could request the smaller size. And then you did that through the town offices. Yeah, the town uh, handled that. Yeah, okay. So there must have been some costs associated with taking back those 96 gallon tows to provide the smaller tows, which is what they wanted. They really wanted the smaller tow. Yeah, they had one bag of garbage a week, and that was a lot. Um, the other thing is that the recycling tow, and I give you guys credit, on top of the tow, it shows you in graphic form what can go in there. So the people can see basically what's on the brochure, and I don't know if you're planning on doing that for these tows or not, but it actually shows you on the top of the tow. And it's, it, it is also uh, graphically in the brochure as well. Um, so a, a lot of that shit. Um, the, the comments that I have received from people um, were what happens if they exceed their capacity of the tow in a given week? What do they have to do? My understanding is that they will have to go to zoning, building codes, or to purchase uh, what a sticker or a something to put on a, the additional bag that can't weigh more than 40 pounds. Yes, yeah. how is that? You, you have yet to set that process up. Yeah, we're, we're, we're working together on the end of the day because the initial thought was instead of each of the municipalities go and call the waste management, purchase their own pocket stickers that the county would absorb the cost of the stickers and then we would distribute them to the municipalities that are. That's one of our thought processes on doing that. But, yeah, but there's a cost associated. There is that. So who would then undertake the collection of that fee? The planning fee? We, we would. The county would. Yes. Yeah. I say fee. I like to include Jim and everything. Well, I think in this instance, you've got to be specific because the bulk of all this has fallen on his shoulders. And then how would you have to be you extra for that? So uh, when we uh, provide the extra capacity stickers, we're essentially selling you the stickers at so that we're time. So we them up front. Correct. Correct. Yes, you're paying up front. Or then we get it as we get as we collect the monies to get that those monies back. And that can be in any quantity you would like. Uh, for I think we should just talk about it. Save the garbage for the next week. I had one person ask me when we put waste or uh, yard waste in our in our trash and put it out. What do we do with this yard waste now? And I'm like, well, compost it. You know? yeah. Don't burn it up at the curb or put it in your garbage tub. And then that doesn't doesn't your, does the town or the village pick it up? I mean, no, they have no, they the village does, but at the town, I mean, because we excuse that to the uh, waste management exclusively, we don't bring that our waste. We can still burn barrels and offset the cost. We expect to show compost. So, that's the other question, too, was large items, mattresses, couches, chairs. How is that going to be handled? So that is handled on a, a monthly basis now. So three items a month uh, instead of one item a week. Uh, with one item a week is current. They're going to go to three items a month. <laughs> the calendar specifies which month. It's always going to be the fourth full week 
of the month. So if the week starts with a Monday, that's considered a full week. So uh, that is fall week where they just put it out like they normally would. So we have to educate the residents that you're going to have a specific date or week for your collection of wire items and you're allowed a maximum of three. Correct. Okay. Dan, it just have stuff laying out on the curb. <laughs> just leave it well, like most people. Throw it out there when they come and get it. They come and get it. Yeah, well, it's not always. The other question that I received was, was, was today, it's still got one thing. <clears throat> so I understand from Jeans that if you have like a four unit apartment, you're going to have a total of eight yes. containers sitting out front. Yep. That's a lot in a, you know, in a, in a, and especially the large size containers. I mean, that's quite a few containers sitting out there. They could consolidate them if they want to. You know, that's that's an option for them. So um, I, I recommend them taking uh, those totes um, and using as many as they, they need, right? So maybe they only need two out on a given week. Um, but some weeks they use all four. Uh, that's that's so relying on the individual <clears throat> residents within that apartment unit to talk to each other about yes how this is going to be done. That's correct. Um, you know, we, we we said right from the get go that education was a big component of this. You know, and I think it still is. Um, so. I, I think the burden is really on waste management to make sure that the residents of the county understand what's what's coming mm -hmm. at them and when when this collection process will start and so on and so forth. Particularly for people like snowbirds or seasonals, um, they may not even fill out a car because they're in Florida or somewhere, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we have thought about that piece um, and we'll kind of address that as it comes up. You know, we, we have a deadline at the end of this week for those requests to, to come in, uh, but if there's extenuating circumstances, um, you know, some, like you said, it's almost in Florida or whatever, we'll, we'll work with that. Okay. I do. The distribution effect that. So you're going to have places in each town where you're going to bring them all and then distribute them to the people from there? Not necessarily each town, but think of dividing the entire county into five areas, which is what we do with our um, services, right? Okay. Five days during the week, five areas. So we're, we're going to try to identify a spot in with hopefully everybody's help here, um, spot within each of those five areas. So one spot per area uh, for that. And they'll probably uh, be in there, you know, four or five days um, before they're moving on to the next. So not, uh, not a huge uh, burden. Usually we end up using a uh, uh, highway parking lot or, or whatever it might be. Residents aren't picking them up though. I think there's no no the residents aren't picking them up. Their their uh, crews are taking them right to the, the driveways. Well, they do require specialized equipment on your part with the articulated arms to pick them up and dump them. When they're serviced, yes. Yeah. Um, it's uh, the two pieces the one distributing them out, you know, you'll, you'll see uh, guys on the back of. Uh, uh, flatbed trucks, you know, working off those. Uh, but yes, when it comes to the collection, it's uh, an automated arm. The other thing I'll, I'll mention is this point come up is um, another thing residents will have to get used to, but it's an easy thing. It's now going to be a separate trash truck from the recycle truck. Um, so, might get a couple things that their trash might get picked up at 9 a.m., but it might not be till 12 or 1 o'clock that day that the recycle picks up, right? So they early on, this, this works its way out in a couple of weeks' time. So we'll get used to it. But 
Um, just something to be aware of, for sure. Okay. All right, any other questions for Pat? Thank you very much. And please know if you have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out. Okay. All right. And James, I want to thank you again publicly for your enormous work in covering all of this information. You know, I mean, when you showed you showed me the number of calls that you received and the number of requests and emails. That it was just overwhelming. I, I mean, it's been a team effort, and particularly with Lisa at Codes. That she's worked herself through the set. She has oh, gone no. above and beyond. So, like, my fear is we bring Lisa, like, just then the state, the, the team at Codes, we should be proud of. They've gone well above and beyond working weekends, working at, you know, after hours, and in doing so, again, being very kind, considerate, helpful. 95% of the calls have been very lovely. Um, and the 5% that happened, people that handled them very professionally. Great, great. You can forward those 5% to Christine. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I we had, you know, we had to get some emergency help. I, I thought about how the principal had all this from Superman. We give all those to us. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to the group did the pull together really fast, very well. When the call started, it was just like somebody flipped the switch. Literally, it starts right now. Here comes a thousand phone calls. Make it happen. And it was, I mean, we were in the office. Like, we couldn't even we were looking at each other and answer like, this is the I need to help out. <laughs> I mean, it looked just like that. It's crazy. So, but we're, we're getting to it. No, no indication. I mean, um, heck, we've got the first 2,000 people. Every question they have, it's, it's already done. <laughs> oh. and Mr. Chairman, we'll provide on each of the supervisors who made the request for each town so you know which one of your constituents have requested a 64 yellow tone. Also, I will let you know of certain individuals who had concerns or problems. Okay. So you'll be well aware. <laughs> Thank you very much. That would be more so. How many calls are we looking at? Uh, total number of about uh, 23,000. Oh, <laughs> how much is that? How much would that cost? You know, American dollars. Uh, total cost? Yeah, I mean, um, just on the cost of the ball. A million dollars? Uh, about 1.6 million. Can I put my old can Cans and the recyclable cans. <laughs> <laughs> it would. Uh, the old cans are typically garbage. So. Don't buy an old can. Okay. Yeah, those okay. um, brochures that you brought for everybody. You would be happy to have those electronically that you could forward to me, and I can make a part of that. You betcha. And I have to say, of all the towns, the only town I have been kind of concerned about is the town of Pike. Um, we haven't received many calls from Pike. It just seems that it's an anomaly. So we have reached out to Loretta, the, the town of Pike, to say, hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a select few towns and villages that still have, like, use those frames. Okay, why they haven't gotten anything yet. Every town it seems like they finally get the postcards that day. We get a big post call. <laughs> Some of the streets is, you know, cold. You know, as soon as we start getting phone calls, we're all the same time. We so. started to get a, we began to get a surge of calls from Silver Springs. We're on the line, like, hey, if you have friends, neighbors, relatives, let them know. And I think there has been a good network of, because we all of a sudden get like 20 calls from Silver Springs at once. So I think we're, it's, it's not as efficient as I'd like, but it is getting, the word is getting out there. And, and Pat has given his word. If there is a senior that desperately needs a 64 gallon tone, we're going to make sure that we get the 64 gallon tone. So, all right, thank you. Just a couple more items here um, under planning and uh, development. So, permission to pay some bills from 2020. Uh, we have one from Thompson Raiders, uh, the amount of 
$1,594, and that was for planning and zoning and publications. And then to the Johnson newspapers, uh, a total of $42, and that invoice state was $829.20 for publication. Janice, you had a lot of support attention. Typically, we close a year and work to it, and this is two years ago, so I'm just bringing it, letting you know, we're bringing it, letting you know, um, I mean, I can't believe someone would send us stuff and we get stuff and not pay for two years, but whatever. It was shocking to when I learned of this, it was a high alert. We did receive this service, so they did provide a service. Sure. We confirmed that. Um, it's... It's well, that's what's surprising because when I first read the Johnson newspaper, it was for waste management. <laughs> for the various towns in 2020. Okay, this is a long overdue. So, it's just an approval to pay that. All right, so someone would put it out. Okay, so there's a motion, yeah. okay. motion from Luann Roberts, ladies' bills. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. And then um, number three, which is a transfer, I think we need to withdraw that because that's part of the end of year approval that I have. And we've already approved that transfer because we have to get a paid. Today's the last day to get 2021 paid. So that had to be done. So that is withdrawn. Okay. Okay, so number item number four, and we had talked about this through the night spoken and then email with the chairwoman. Um, to create one position of keyboard specialist part-time temporary um, at 1729 an hour, not to exceed 14 hours per week, effective January or February 15. 2022 through March 25th for a period not to exceed six weeks. And the emergency fill was executed by the chairwoman. I believe you have a person already in the school, correct? Correct. And um, you know, I, get to point out, I don't know if 1729 is the correct amount for something. I don't think any of us have seen the new CSCA contract. Oh, the new contract. Okay. <laughs> Have the paperwork here though for this position. So, when will we know? Or should we just take a guess? <laughs> no, <laughs> not to guess. I um, will get a hold of Dan Barberman because I know that he hasn't happened. Okay, we'll look up and see if they agree. The new, uh, yeah, table A, step two, right? Or step three, grade two, step three. Correct. Got it. These amounts were sent to me, uh, Carol, from, from God, Ford. Okay. Those were the new. This is the new? Those are the new. Okay. Oh, all right. I asked him to just clarify the new stuff. He gave you stuff one to six. Okay. So, so these are verified numbers. Very good. Mm -hmm. And this is to uh, fulfill needs that you have in the planning and in zoning, right? Yes, the concern is that this with this call volume, as construction season approaches, it's wonderful to rent lease of an apple, but it's going to get to, we're going to just become completely overwhelmed. So it's essential um, to have that. Okay, sure. Sure to move this. Yeah, okay. Motion by Supervisor Davis. Any further discussion? Guy, is this person looking for more work than just that? You know yes, that? yes, yes, they are willing to do that. We had a discussion with Mike and Kristen that she's a little overwhelmed with stuff down there, and she would know, like to give somebody just a little bit to help her out. Or maybe this is somebody you can use the link as, as, yes, as, as a rule or the to help know that when sure. she was busy there, she was busy there, Kristen, and she was back. Is Kristen in a short term position where she needs help? Uh, beginning of the fall, for example, beginning of the year is always a long time with, with things transferring and, and your yeah. stuff. But uh, I, I was off last week and I want to further discuss 
the belief that Kristen has to to better better use time and help develop your community, whether it is a couple hours a day or maybe 15 hours a week, something like that. You know what I mean? Something to, to help out with the, with the workload. Are you Michael just says, are you planning to bring a, a request to Public Works Board for a similar type of position? Not tomorrow, I won't, but uh, it'll be next month. But it is definitely, a, I will discuss it tomorrow. Okay. So, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll move this. We've already moved it, right? We've got, we got, right. We've got a motion to come up. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I mean, we can ultimately, if we need to decide to amend this, or you need to work together, or you can bring your own request. This is only for 14 hours, which I would assume is going to consume. It's for self time. You know, our part time, you know, our part time off, we're just trying to take uh, one half off the immediate need for what we have to do right now, uh, which is going to help out a great uh, but. You know, this particular person is exceptionally great help. Right. Um, but uh, she has some daycare responsibilities, so she can't do sure that. So, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm concerned yeah, that this is about a rags time here. Yes, you know, we have some other big ticket things that you're going to need to concert on, you know, broadband and comprehensive plans for the county. So, we got to make sure that. It, you know, we could manage that. Again, there's administrative type things that can be done, and this person can do it all for it. All right. Uh, let's see, I think uh, it was, we're going to amend a resolution um, 21 063, which was passed by the Board of Supervisors with Environmental Enterprises for Glow Region Household Hazardous Waste Collection, not to exceed 32,000 to extend for 2022 collection. <laughs> and Peggy Grayson, uh, since her apology, she'd like to have been here, but she's unable to. So. Okay. I'm moving. Jerry, okay, I have another motion by Supervisor uh, Davis to move it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed, Jerry. Okay. Then, was that an error? Or did you have your poll? Did you have a discussion on employee distribution of workflow? Well, or somebody gives us an update on broadband. Okay. Um, I, it, it's. The past few weeks, like it, uh, garbage has exhumed all, just consumed all the oxygen, of them, which is the problem. No other work is getting done. And for instance, broadband, we're trying to move forward with ECC's uh, survey and uh, mapping and analysis. So right now, where we're at, we have a 4.9% response rate, which is the, four, the second, goes back and forth to the second, third highest rate this year, which is great. We need to get above 5%. So that data is statistically significant, which would be gold for, for uh, uh, future grant purposes. So if we can find 50 other people, find, we need to find 50 people who have not done so. Go to wyomingcountybroadband.com. We just need 50 people. So uh, it takes all of five to seven minutes. And, and it's really up to one of the aspects of the survey. It's not just hey, how much you pay, who's your carrier, or do you have no carrier at all. Um, but for people who do have broadband, the speeds and people are discovering very quickly that the speeds are nowhere near what they should be, or what we pay for, or what they pay for. So that is um, very, very important, and that's vital information for the, the, the survey. The second part, I did get some preliminary information from the number of unserved. Um, and rather, what the state has provided us and what uh, Charter Communications has provided us is a big discrepancy. Mark Meyerhofer from, from Charter Communications knows Miami County very well. It's worked with all the supervisors. His crew literally know every square mile of Miami County. And uh, 
they did as a service to us to provide, you know, kind of like we'll do another, give you a number of unserved and give you like a cost build out, which has been very helpful for myself. So they came up with a number about 2,200, 2,200, 2,300. For now, the number one circle, the number one circle about 20 that he came up with in a base number of 2,200 number of households that were served. He actually believes that number is higher. So when I got the preliminary information from uh, DPS, from ECC, they came up and gave me a number of 1,600. I'm very concerned because the methodologies are the same. They reviewed the same uh, area, how you had the dis different difference of almost 600 people um, is very alarming. And with the governor's connect all, it's not connect all, connect some now, maybe some later, it's connect all. So we need really good data. Uh, I was spoke with the commissioner of DPS this, this morning, um, we're going back and forth. Of course, I have to be very careful. I can't share the, the, the data that Spectrum has, or Charter has provided us, and I can't, you know, I can't give that to DPS. D, I'm not allowed to give the DPS data to, to Charter. So I'm caught in the middle. Mark has been wonderful. Mark has been very helpful. Hey, these are, and this is what's going on. The state, unfortunately, has not been helpful. The commissioner at first was spent most of the meeting questioning the motivation for charter. Why would charter do this for you? Well, well you didn't pay them? Why, why would they, they're trying to be helpful. Um, and I asked, I think just as a reasonable person, you have this discrepancy, the same methodology. Why aren't you re-looking at what you did? Um, and uh, a good example that really sticks out that we know is just blatantly wrong. So they have, for the town of Bennington, they have three unserved households. Uh, Mark and Ellen know for a fact there's at least 61. And I pointed that out. Like, we know exact amount of Bennington. And they're still challenging this. So we, this is a, 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 a beginning of a journey that will be, <laughs> I might involve, involve you all. Mm -hmm. um, it's it just been frustrating. I felt like when I was speaking with the commissioner, I was a child going to the principal. She was talking down. Well, why, why don't you just take our data and run with it? Well, it's wrong. And we're missing a significant number of households. So um, that's where we're coming. So that's why the survey is so important. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we sh you should, everyone should have received an email with the brochure. It lists the survey. I would encourage you to print that out. And what we did, we took it to the post office, we took it to the library, hung it up for people so that it was visible within the community, it would not be used. But if you haven't done that, um, it, it's a good opportunity to get that out in front of, or put it on your website. And they made it very difficult for the other service. So, for instance, the Jazz Call 1 800 number for paper survey. Right. Yeah. You literally be on the phone for almost 12 to 15, I timed it, 12 minutes, because it goes back and forth, first in English, then in Spanish. So it, uh, I think of most people would just hang up. Yeah, you get to the point of saying, hey, I'm in the of Warsaw, sure. please send me this. They will refuse to give us paper copies for us to distribute. I was told I was not to do that. Um, <laughs> so they're not going to be easy. No, they're not. Um, we are, I will be uh, presenting a statement, I'll get to the chairman, chairman so you can approve. Um, they are having a, a hearing on our behalf just to, to say, hey, you know, our rural counties, we need to connect our rural counties. A concern is that with this billion connect all, it's the urban centers are going to consume all the funds and we're not going, we're still going to have people on I mean, Mark has a few folks have told me, you know, offline, make sure that we make a statement for the Public Service Commission on that. And we can um, contact two senators' offices now, two uh, yeah, state senators' offices, and also um, get contact with the senators' office, too. Is this a topic for discussion at uh, the upcoming night side? I think it, it is, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, uh, one of the engineering firms is doing a presentation. He's been in contact with me about this. Uh, I mean, I reached out to even our sister communities within the Genesee Vale. Like I said, some of them didn't have the benefit of charters uh, mapping. But Ontario and Maine counties, they've done their own uh, you know, funded uh, mapping. They're a couple of years old. They're finding discrepancies as, as well. Uh, not as blatant as ours. Uh, but nevertheless, it should be, again, connect all. And they should be really interested in accuracy. And I, it, it just, I was just blown away. Well, Ontario County has their own fiber optic loop. In that. Yeah. Uh, so that was it. So Richard Sullivan from the Genesee Bing Lake said he him and I have been working together. I said, hey. Um, it, they said it just unfortunately it was a very Albany-esque encounter. Well, they, you know, you gotta continue to make noise. I, I think it's helpful to have someone reviewing this. If there wasn't someone challenge it, it would fall behind it would slip through the cracks. Um, and Joanna Craig Mile from our GIS fellow, she's been really helpful. Um, so, again, I think we've been punching up well above our weights. I mean, they just assume we could go over it. My story has shipped from Elon Musk, so it should be right in here. I'll let you know how it works. <laughs> Is there still just these franchise areas? Is there still, I'm sorry? Franchise areas. Because uh, we were told that our area was a huge net, and so Spectrum would have been the area. That's Mark has that is answer chess. There's also Armstrong. Yes, yes. I mean, it's something I wish that the, the governor might get good kind of like, you look at clusters, there's one cluster. Uh, and the Finger Lake stuff is here, and then there's another cluster that's kind of near the Catskills and North Country. If you took those counties, I'll say, them, how do we connect? How do we work this together? As opposed to doing it on your own, uh, it, it might be a lot more advantageous. Because uh, I know my colleagues in Colorado, you know, in counties, they're having the same issues. Um, whereas a Livingston County that has a well developed staff, they're better, better positioned. <laughs> What about our, our smaller books? And then the number, the number one and number two is the Allegheny Cataractus. We're number four from the bottom when it comes to the number of our service. Um, so we, I thought for sure we'd be at least a priority in the list. Yeah. It's very upsetting. Yeah. And I have, I have told you, we don't have any recent planning initiatives. So this, the reason I put so much emphasis on helping them out is that this is really, this is our one shot to catapult for our <laughs> So other counties such as Wayne and Ontario, they've had previous efforts. We have not nothing really relatively modern. So that's why it's important. Anything else? And so like, just going back to the point of just uh, of help, um, this is a concern I had is that a lot of my time has been um, consumed with administrative um, and we are having issues. Uh, so I think at some point we might have to reevaluate and at that time I'd be better able to speak on this than I, than I am. And I think that some of the supervisors are probably aware of some issues that we're having internally in the office and we have the to get those resolved. And hopefully we will be able to move in a positive direction. Uh, the sooner we lay down a, a you know a final game plan of where we're going to be here, it will be very helpful to Jim, especially, um, who has more than committed to our county as far as being here. Um, not only has he taken the job here for Wyoming County and wanted to become our county planner, he has also moved here. So it's a huge commitment on his behalf. And uh, I just, you know. Hate to leave them situations. So, I mean, our, our, obviously, my uh, both of my offices so only handle what we go to help them as much as they possibly can. But we're going to get into a situation as our, our season gets busier here where you know, I leave Jim without help, and you know, uh, you know, the waste management and the curbside collection program is it a all of us enough as it is, but this isn't the only thing we hire Jim to come here for. Uh, 
Uh, we have a lot of other expectations and a lot of other avenues and projects that we'd like to tackle, but you know, the longer stuff like this goes on, the longer it takes us to get back to that. You know, we're going to lose a couple of months of being absorbed with a couple of what we consider small projects. <laughs> Um, hopefully they don't stay large for us uh, so that we can move on. So, 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 so like the CFA getting ready for CFA to be able to the local water for redevelopment plan, uh, common comprehensive plan, those are very, very important on the broadband. Also with uh, CDBG, the uh, farm worker housing, as well as business assistance. Unfortunately, the garbage happened at the worst possible moment. And um, it, 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 I, I, I want to know. I think it is getting to the point where there, there is going to be some time. There's not much. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> Welcome. Any questions or concerns you have? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Think, uh, next on the agenda is to review the email right? from Mike. This was um, sent to a number of us around space allocation. This is the uh, discussion around possibility of moving veteran services, correct? Correct. Yeah, we had a discussion last month. Um, we were going to wait till this round of committees to possibly touch base on that. Um, but uh, the department heads have already touched base on that. I figured I'd bring right out with Tony, and he met me at the Ag Center, we toured the Ag Center. Uh, he, he fell in love with the space, really. He does like the space. There's new alterations that need to be made um, within some of the larger rooms to create uh, private office space. Uh, nothing that we have or that we can't, we can't do. Um, so it's just a matter of getting the approvals to, to do so. Uh, I gave Tony kind of a rough drawn uh, copy of, of what I foresee. And, and different doors and this and that. And he actually just got back to me uh, this morning with what, what he perceives. And uh, I feel with about $3,3500 worth of changes, additional, and a lot of that is just commercial doors again. Um, we've already got drywall and, and framing materials, stuff of that nature. Um, we can get them into the roughly 2,000 square feet that is available that Cornell has vacated. Sure. So that space is open. Well, it's they're in process. So the, they, they have a lot of items still there, but uh, nobody's working out of that space. They're trying to move their, their they have like their their plant room, their drawer room, however you know. And so yeah. What is this like a CDE program? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I still don't know what they keep in there, but uh, the base sales been good. So, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Moving on, it's going to be the order now. Sure, right. right. Um, so, so this this move will allow Laura to then take over the roughly two thousand square feet. Um, to should open up a break room, conference room, um, maybe some private office space down there in the health department that she is in dialing for. Are you working with her on a specific plan for how she's going to occupy that? We have a proposed plan. We're trying to come up with uh, funding for that. She, she, she's looking for kitchen space, break room space, and then maybe some, some additional office space where veteran services is but um, the, the big thing is altering what is their clinic room now uh, into a break room and kitchen they they kind of have one little section of countertop down there now and uh, the microwave coffee maker and uh, we, we 
could update a restroom and stuff like that. She has a meeting space. She does need a meeting space, mm -hmm. yes. Is that included in this? That would be where veterans, that would include the, the space that veterans have. Correct. Okay. So, so for $3,500, it really does take care of uh, the, the, the need for both departments. Um, one of the biggest things that Tony really did like was currently uh, RTS does not transport veterans to the health department. Don't know why that was. I don't know. Either. Don't understand that. I, I thought we could kind of tell them where to go, but uh, it, it's not in the room. Being in the village, they, they have access then to the Ag Center, and uh, it, it, it'll really work out well for more of the veterans that are in need of a, a, a ride to get to the yeah, yeah, it's definitely a big plus. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he's reached out to the various veterans groups within the county, though, close and asked them, you know, hey, what if we were to move to the war so would that be more advantageous? I think they would love it because they liked it when they were in the war. <laughs> so that was like the location. It, it was, yeah. yeah. They would access to the So, what kind of time frame? Approximately, there we're talking about here. If we give you the go, I'd like to have them in there by May. I'm sorry, by May. By May. Yeah. yeah, I have a few projects from the courthouse here that we have to wrap up by the end of March. Spend April the there and we do like a move in around May to help them, you know, move all their items down there. Um, there's very little, there's honestly very little to do at the Ag Center. Uh, in order to, to get them to work. The chambers are efficient. Sure. So today, um, I would assume you're looking for permission and an appropriation. Uh, just permission. The, the funds are there. Yeah, the funds are there. That's what the appropriation. We have a budget. We put money in the budget for things. Exactly. We kind of foresee. Things coming down the pipeline here like this, and uh, we added some extra funds this year for movement, knowing that space allocation was going to be a big topic this year. So, so at this point, I don't need any money to do so. Just the approval to allow them to So, we're not using ARPA funds? $3,500. No. And what about the public, the health department? Are the they going to ask for that too? So $3,500 would cover the move for veterans, and I budgeted $10,000 last year, knowing that this may come for any alterations that the, that the health department may need, but I foresee what Laura needs. Laura came to me with a request after the first of the year this year, so I didn't know that she's looking for a new break room, new kitchen, stuff like that. Um, she knows I have $10,000 available for that. But I foresee a thirty thousand dollar project moving walls, adding kitchen space, restroom space down there. So she's working on that because there may be grant funds or something available on her end. A lot so, of times they get that additional state aid, the specific performance money, and they usually use that for a project. I think like that quarter coat thing. There was uh, a I mean, it yep. seems like every year they get a specific allocation or something, and we're hoping this lines up the, the stars align that veterans is able to move out. Laura can then expand her space, moving people around, opening it into that new veteran space, and then we can really sit down and come up with a plan for um, for the break room conference room. She's always been really good at finding funding. If not, I think she deserves it anyway. <laughs> So this is a done deal. The move is going to happen. Well, I, we're we're gonna because my concern, and I know the building is ADA compliant, but ADA compliant doesn't necessarily mean easy access for people. If you ever wheel someone around in a wheelchair, or if some of our veterans who are somewhat limited in their mobility and are pretty stubborn or determined, 
That building is not, and I don't think we need to find a space for that, but that building is not access friendly to people with limited mobility, even though it is ADA compliant. I think it's the same distance. I'm not talking about the distance, I'm talking about the ramp. I had a, my mother was limited and I wheeled her places and it wasn't hard for me, but it would have been impossible for her to get into some of these places. And that's just something that we've got to keep in mind. Mike is young, able to move easily. I'm still able to move everybody in this room in it, but Jim experienced it maybe a little bit here recently. <laughs> Open your eyes to things if you've been involved in, and things that we don't necessarily think about if we've not experienced it. That's those are my only thoughts. Yeah, I, I expressed that concern because you you said that last month, and, and Tony didn't feel that it would be a major concern. He, he more saw the availability of the classrooms downstairs for host meetings that uh, that they were hosting outside before, stuff like that. So, and, and again, the RTS thing was a big contributor where people weren't just, they, they just weren't using the services because they couldn't get there. I think he will make, make plans to, to help, you know, the veterans up a ramp if need be, but, but uh, Maybe it'd be better to, to roll him on, on some of those discussions lower. Well, I think uh, you're, you're speaking specifically, Mike, about entry into the building. Once you're in the building, it's wide open. Exactly. You can go anywhere. It's just getting in there. <laughs> and I think, you know, if, you know, if the uh, you know, receptionist there, you know, Help someone get in the building, and then oh, a big plus, you know. So anything we can do, to that. and I think that you know they can just call and someone can come out. And, and you, you know, I was surprised because uh, one time I watched one of the RTS buses drop off someone in a wheelchair at the uh, at the local Walmart here. And they actually helped them get out and up onto the sidewalk. Then someone came out of the store, the employee, to push them in to the store. So I thought, wow, you know, RTS guys are really terrific in getting people access to various locations to make it to. Very helpful. But I understand your concern, sure. Okay. So, given that Tony has a desire to move, you think it's a good idea, uh, it opens up space for further help. Yep. Um, seems like a good plan. Someone want to offer my permission to move forward with this? I will. Okay. Motion by the supervisor, uh, Roberts. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Anything else? I have one thing. Sure. Um, this morning uh, at Public Health, I had met with Kelly you know, a couple of weeks ago down at her office. As it is. Um, I know that you guys took the tour, and that space is not. The best. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to find some space for mental health. And it's not something that we need to do overnight. It's just keep our eye open for some space that would be available to house them. And I'm not sure exactly how many square feet they need. Like uh, roughly, the space they have right now is around 2,500 square feet. Is what we estimated last year. Uh, the building is bigger than that, but they don't occupy a lot of the upstairs space. So, so they do have ten employees, so we would we would uh, adjust them exactly. I, I just want to throw that out there to the planning committee to keep your eye open for availability of space. Well, that's a little bit distressing, in as much as they just 
sign a new lease. There, there is a there's there is an option. There's an option on there. We need sure there's an option. Ninety day. Option to, oh, to to get out of the lease. Get out of the, I would have said fix these things first. That's well, we fix these it's, 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 it's still terrible. It's done. The, the they're working on it, but they're not space for. We're working on it, but I'm working on it. Ellie's got some emails that uh, she's very concerned, and and things are not being addressed as they should be. And everything's been shared with the landlord. So. So what is the alternative? Try to find some space for mental health. That's yeah. We, we don't have any space within the buildings. That's like a, right. We would have to lease space somewhere else. Exactly. Or purchase. Or purchase. Yeah. Or purchase. Gary, I spoke with the money this morning after the meeting, and we just kicked the thing around into the building down there. That used to be uh, Dr. Solomon, maybe that was big surgeon. I thought of that one. So I don't know whether that's something we can afford or not. I don't. But I think he had a three hundred. Thousand dollar price is right now. Yeah, that's what I got. So if I could be wrong, maybe it's come down. Maybe it's been empty for quite some time. And if you take into consideration the, the amount of rent we paid for mental health is paid as well for the past 10 years at $22,000 a year or whatever that is, you know, uh, I feel. Owning the building is, is a county is, is way better because we can we have a checkbook to maintain it for one, and, and we can oversee what's being maintained. It's, I mean, we're learning that with the current process now. And with purchase, it's it's. I mean, this is not something that's urgent. It's just, but you know, lease space is always the least desirable. You know, for for a county. Um, entity, you know, department, you know, to be in a purchase location where we can maintain that facility the way. Well, that's what I'm saying. See, see, see that, but yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of leasing. Question for Janice. Open, right? Question for Janice on the reimbursement. Mental health gets reimbursed for the rent. Correct. Leasing, yes. Right. And Kelly thought there's some sort of if we own the building, there's some sort of a maintenance. I think it's like um, public health or DSS where you have a maintenance in lieu of rent kind of a Ma thing. Maintenance in lieu of rent. It's, a, it's a calculation. And actually, our cost report auditors do something similar to that now, but it's not. We don't have the expense, so it doesn't show much. But we have the expense. It would show a little bit more. Um, so I have a question for Jim about, about leasing space. Of course, there are about space within the county. The hospital has the 408 building. I, and I haven't been in there in years. I remember renovating that building years ago. But what do we use that building for now? I know physical therapy is downstairs, but there was workplace health is downstairs. Uh, upstairs are doctor's offices. I think they're all full. Yeah, okay. But there was the right, as you walk in, the right side of the building was. An old that doctor's gone, I believe, but I don't think it's big enough yeah. for mental health. Yeah, it looks like it's it's, a, it's only the space of the, like a doctor's office. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty small. They're pretty crunched for space over there. I mean, my office is, was a closet at one time. Gotcha. But um, you know. Yeah, I just didn't know what the upstairs was used for. But it, it yeah, it's, it's a clinic. It's, and the Peds clinic is is big. And the women's clinic is also big, and that pretty much. And then the urology. Urology. Yeah. I think that's it. It's called. And they're all open. You know, it's not like they're only there once a month or something. Because I just know that as we talk about mental health, I know HR is going to be on the back burner as well for keeping space. There are already double satin desks type of deal there. So uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to. to Think about a larger building again, much like the Ag Center to incorporate different uh, different county agencies. But uh, well, another thing is we need to see what's going to happen with this whole opioid money because mental health, I mean, our mental health doesn't deal with that on a case by case basis. But um, and this was something that I have been talking with Joe and Bridget. Um, Joe's 
determine and bridge it, give it some help for the last couple of months, is um, the mental health as far as the treatment and the hospital owns the land across the street too. But that, that would be huge money, but they're saying that there's going to be a lot of money for to fix the problems that, that occurred mentally through COVID and stuff. So it's just a matter of we got right at our arm in that too. New build yeah. stuff is, is expensive being built. Um, but it's not gonna get any cheaper. So if we're gonna do it. <laughs> well it's yes. just you gotta no, see what the oh, sure. gonna say sure. and the opioid market is but all things look like it's it, it'll be continuing year after year for a few years. But it can't be used like a tobacco market. And actually, got a meeting with um, uh, general concern and stuff too. Something's going on there. It's, it's just maybe a possibility out there. Okay. Anything else? Uh, tomorrow morning during my committee, um, I will have our members. Uh, campus construction came back with a report for us or I don't mention it because it was back and forth last last month. I got the permission to get uh, budgetary numbers from campus for buildings grounds slash highway building, uh, public works buildings, what we're calling it, that would be placed uh, at the highway department. Um, I will have uh, rough budgetary numbers, but it's their ballooned numbers, what it would cost for, for the structure we're looking to put up. Um, Everything is prevailing wage, of course, um, and then we can go. We can go from there, altering the plans that, that we see fit. But at least we have an idea of um, what the what the building is going to look to for cost. So I'll have a. a it was too late in the day today coming up here to to get it printed or get it sent to show, but I'll have a report for everybody. But I'll see that tomorrow. Anything else for Mike? Thank you very much. Thank you. Looks like it completes the agenda for today. Anything else to come before planning? Thank you. Thank you. That's right, it was canceling sick or something. It's like whenever you call us. No, he's trying to help out one day before he goes. I know. I know. Just a telephone email. You don't see it until I get it. But I have to make a drive. I think you're right. Yep. It's like. Yeah, the calendar. Everyone comes in. Right? Yeah, but I guess they got to get the lid off. Now, Angela, she's the uh, chief. I don't know if she's the secretary. She saw it. She knows. Oh, she's on there. Well, they used to do a yeah, I no, I have a No, I have a breakfast. You know, so it's not going to be. No, it's just You know, the. Mark said he to give you a head job. But he said he's going to keep you. It's just a little change. 
No, no, I started to be able to try. I've never been to Zoom or not. Yeah. There was. Yeah. 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 There was. 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 Yes. 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 Yes.